August 19, 1942, Dieppe, France. The surf is turning red. On the beach, Canadian soldiers are being massacred. Why? Because their tanks, their only protection, are drowning in the shallows, dropped too far from shore. It was a catastrophe that proved a terrifying truth. The Allies could bomb Germany, they could blockade them, but they couldn't touch them. Unless they built a ship that defied physics, a ship that could cross a rough ocean, and then drive onto a sandy beach like a car. The engineers called it a naval impossibility. The crews called it a death trap. They built the LST, flat bottom, ungainly. Max speed, pathetic 10 knots. Sailors mocked it. They looked at the designation LST and gave it a cruel nickname, large, slow, target. They laughed at it until Sicily, 1943. That's when the target hit the sand, opened its massive steel mouth and changed history. Suddenly the ugly bathtub was vomiting 2,000 tons of tanks directly into the enemy's face. From D-Day to the Pacific, it became the Swiss Army knife of war. It wasn't just a transport, it became a floating hospital, performing amputations inside its hull while under fire. It became an aircraft carrier with makeshift runways. The Germans were baffled. The Japanese called it the Green Dragon. The ship they ridiculed had become the spine of the invasion. But the nickname Target was still deadly accurate. At Okinawa, kamikaze pilots ignored the battleships and dove straight for the LSTS. They knew these slow ships carried the ammo and gasoline. Hundreds of sailors burned alive inside these steel boxes. But the ships, they refused to sink. They were hollow, tough, and stubborn. In the end, it wasn't the sleek destroyers or the atomic bomb that physically reclaimed the world. It was the ugly, slow workhorse. When the guns fell silent, the LST didn't just carry tanks, it carried millions of boys back home, proving that sometimes the unlikeliest hero is the one everyone laughed at.